that you can have if you try and bring people along with you to change something right down to that that moment outside the school but another thing I then realized was that when I went to church and I wasn't that particularly religious or anything but I noticed there was only altar boys on on the thing and all of a sudden I was interested in religion and that was only because (laughs) I wanted to be an altar boy slash girl so again I said okay well it worked the last time with the school trousers let's go and see can we try and and that was changed as well and then we became Kilnarden Parish allowed us to be to be altar girls and even though I only stayed for two weeks <laughs> but it still changed something you know it still changed that the altar girls then were allowed to you know that was a thing then we were allowed uh, to participate at that level now there was other things that I, I, tr- I rebelled against and I struggled with and most of them were gender in them early years. I was very unaware of any sort of class divide. I didn't know that I was being, I was at an education disadvantage. I was probably really later on in life when I got to college that I actually realised that them things existed. But when I began in uh, first year, things kind of went re- started to go really, really bad for me in terms of me school. And then I was with a friend and she was hit by a bus and she died. And um, we, again, that was another moment where I decided Dublin City Council weren't listening to us. So we came together and we brought everyone together and we covered the streets of Kilnarden for days until county to county council agreed to put ramps on that road. And the struggles really began then in terms of me schooling. And I dropped out of school at 15. I became a mother at 15. I sent me junior search when I was uh, eight months pregnant. And I realised after the first year of having her that actually I was at a huge education disadvantage and I was nearly just counting down the days until I was old enough to go on to the city council and get a house or to be able to go and get lone parents. And I realised that actually this is not, this is not right. This shouldn't be my only options. And I went to Ankasan in Tala and I'd done a course there. And I wasn't really anything specific about the course that led me to move on in education, but it was more in how we were taught in Ankasan. It was sofas, it was circles, it wasn't people lined up. I wasn't being told what to wear and what not to wear. And it allowed me to flourish then because I felt I wasn't fighting back against anything and I was allowed to be me and find out who I was. And this was again, since Miss Tui in, in, in senior infants, this was the first time that the empowerment came back in and I realised that this is leadership, you know, tapping into people's creativity and realising that not everybody learns in the same way. And just because school wasn't for me doesn't mean that education is not for me. And from there is when I started to realise that gender wasn't kind of the only obstacle that I would face in terms of being able to lead my life and my children's lives in a certain way. And when I was about 17, I realized that how good I was at taking in information around mental health and addiction. And I would spend, you know, in in my very early teens, I would have I would have used drugs, sold drugs, robbed cars, everything. And it was all me lashing out because I didn't know where I fitted in anything. And I realized that they were actually topics then that I really cared about, but from a different side. And I went to IT Tala and I, I applied to do a course in the evening. And I, I think I was 17 at the time, and I'd just finished Nankasan, and I said, uh, I, really, I really, really think I'd be really good at working in this field. And I was told I was too young, I had no life experience. And I thought, well, that's silly. I don't need to tell you about my life. Like, I, I feel I have plenty of life experience. And they refused, and they refused. And I told, them, I told them, no, this is for me. This is where I want to work, and I'm not accepting you saying that my age is a barrier to this. So I'm going to show up in IT Tala, and I'm going to sit in your classroom. Now, it's entirely up to you whether you acknowledge me in the room or not, but that'll get pretty <laughs> awkward, but I'm there. So after the first week, they brought me in and they changed the policy and they said, no, OK, we're going to let her on. And, and that's when that began and I began to be able to learn. And what happened, I went and at the end of that course, the lecturer came to me and he said to me, I'm really sorry, I was really wrong. Can I give you a job? Will you develop uh, services for young heroin users in, in Tala? And I was probably the youngest drugs worker in that field. At the age of 18, most people hadn't left school. So it was quite a big thing for him to then take that risk, especially in my own community. So he was aware of that shady past in the early <laughs> teens. So I'm very aware he took a risk on him flying. But he did. And from then, things just kept growing. And I got, I got I developed services in Bluebell, which is probably my proudest piece to date. And I spent a year of them three years there not talking about addiction and not talking about drugs. And, and the task force kind of fought against me a little bit because they were like, it's an addiction service, Lynn. And I was like, yeah, I know, but we're going to try something else. I'm going to teach them. Uh, we got a Michelin star chef in. We developed a cookbook. We then, they began to get employed by the task forces, the councils. And gradually I felt that the more they got an education, the more they got skills, 
it was called filling a gap and it was around filling the gap in women's lives where addiction was trying to replace it with something positive and that grew and it grew but nobody around me liked that in a sense the other services were a bit confused that I wasn't following the normal you know this is how we do things it's addiction counselling let's talk about triggers let's talk about this when in fact talking about triggers is a trigger like in fairness um, so I refused to kind of buy into that this is how it has to be and so many of them women became clean. And then the men looked around and said, that's really good what they're doing, what can we do? And I said, well, they're cooking, maybe we need a garden. So the men began to grow the produce for the women and they create a social economy amongst themselves. But it, they showed great leadership and they went on and they, they came off, some of them came off methadone after being on the 20 and 30 years. And it was just really, they, they began to become leaders in themselves. And I moved on from there because I realized that leadership is actually being able to look and know that your job is done because you're actually not needed anymore. You know, you, you can't be a leader if you have to continue to lead the same, the same circumstances or the same people. <laughs> when they no longer need you and they're driving themselves, you know that you've actually empowered them and that you can step away and allow them carry that themselves. So I'm, I'm, I'm aware of my time here. So I'll skip forward then when I, became, when I came into Trinity College and I realized um, I got extra common all the time walking to tr through Trinity and I don't know why, like it's like I wanted them all to know I'm from Tala and I'm here and <laughs> I don't even talk like this, but I can't talk like anyway. And we, we kids still do and now we live in Front Square and they're shouting out the windows like the tourists are all getting their tours and Jay Lynn is shouting, Ma, when you get me something in the shop? Like, and I love it, like, so it just changes the whole dynamics of what's going on in there. And I suppose, you know, I'm in a really good position right now to try and change some of that elitist attitude that's within Trinity. And I feel that's where my leadership skills have to lie now and trying to create a space and education within the walls of Trinity where the working class and anyone that has any sort of access barriers to education can come and can be supported and can be empowered to learn and change. So I'll just finish on that. I feel that if I'm to look at myself as a leader, that I would hope it would just be in terms of when I see there's an issue and I see that there's a change, that I take that step out and I put myself out there and I try and tackle that and I try and change it, but then I have to move on to the next thing and not get grounded in, you know, in any one area and hopefully you can take people along with you. So, thank you.